The Tudor period is remembered for the reigns of kings and queens such as Henry VIII and Elizabeth I, and it's considered the most bloody period of English history. Henry VIII, for example, executed 70,000 people during his almost four decade long reign as the King of England, and that figure included some of his closest friends and two of his wives. Things did not improve after, with religious turmoil plaguing the country, and Bloody Mary later burning many Protestants at the stake. But during the Tudor times, there were a number of punishments used to bring justice against those criminals, who had committed offences and crimes. The most serious offences, such as treason, were dealt with using the axe, with execution being ordered, but there were a number of other punishments used inside Tudor towns. Join us today as we look at 10 horrific Tudor punishments. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. One way of punishing thieves and pickpockets which was used during the Tudor and medieval period was to cut the limbs and hands off an individual. This is still done today in some cultures around the world, and the idea of losing fingers or hands for thieves was to ensure they could not steal objects again. Cutting and inflicting wounds was also used during torture, with prisoners who were placed on the rack at the Tower of London, and other brutal practices such as fingernails being pulled out were common during the Tudor period. But losing a hand for constant thievery was a brutal way of administering justice inside of towns. The ducking stall was a form of punishment used for those mostly who were accused of being witches or of witchcraft. The victim would be tied to a chair, which was held over a pond, river, lake or a barrel of water. Then the victim would be lowered into the water until they were completely underwater. The chair was raised if the victim was about to lose consciousness, and then they were given the chance to confess to their crimes. Sometimes even fruit and gags were placed in the victim's mouth and nose, so they could not get a good breath, meaning they could easily drown. Ordeal by water began with witch hunts in the 15 and 1600s in England and Britain, and it was a rather brutal thing to have watched. It was also used as punishment for common scolds and gossips during the Tudor period. A classic punishment for drunk people and vagrants who were found inebriated in towns and cities the drunkard's cloak was a form of public humiliation to help drunks improve their public behaviour. They were forced to wear a barrel and then parade around the town until their punishment was deemed over. The barrel had holes cut out for the arms and the head and it was very heavy and when someone saw this being worn the public would often throw things and verbally abuse the drunk in the cloak. This was one way in which the Tudor towns tried to clean up those who they deemed to have been causing problems within a town with regards to ale and alcohol. Whipping was a common way of treating criminals and was witnessed by the public in huge scenes. Criminals would find themselves tied or chained to a whipping post, which could be found in public places such as market squares or village squares. They were here to ensure that people could see what was happening. The victim would be stripped to the waist and secured to the post, before they were then whipped in front of hundreds of people. Some Tudor schools to inflict punishment onto pupils also employed a whipping boy who would be in charge of whipping students who were naughty or misbehaving. Much of the punishment in the Tudor period was meant for deterrence and to put people off committing similar crimes. Similar to whipping, another public form of punishment was branding. Branding was where a criminal would be burned with a red-hot iron in front of crowds. A blacksmith would place a brand inside a hot fire before it was then burned onto the skin of someone. Someone could be branded on the arm, hand, cheek, back or on any part of their body and different letters were used to indicate the crimes that they were guilty of committing. It was likely too that this would scar and the perpetrator would be left with a permanent reminder of their crimes. Branding was dangerous also as a shock could cause someone to become very ill, and even die such was the pain. But also the wound could become infected, and because healthcare was not great during the Tudor period, this could also result in death. One of the most common and famous forms of punishment used during the Tudor period 
was the stocks or the pillory. These were both devices which were used to secure part of a criminal's body into position so they could not escape, and then they were at the mercy of the public, who would throw objects and things at them and subject them to a terrible ordeal. The head and hands were secured through holes of the pillory, and this usually stood in a marketplace, but the stocks locked the feet of a criminal. Depending on how well liked the person was inside the device, that would say how brutal their ordeal would be. If they were particularly unpopular, people would throw heavier objects at them, and even excrement at them. There were accounts of particularly unpopular people being killed by being stoned whilst inside of the stocks or the pillory. Someone could be locked inside of them all day, and the aches would cause problems for the criminals, but as mentioned, it could be very dangerous. Another common way of punishing criminals and offenders was by issuing monetary fines and punitive punishment for those guilty of offences. One example of this was during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, who issued the religious settlement to attempt to unite religion under her rule. She issued rules that said those who refused to attend church services, known as recusants, would be punished financially. The fine depended on the amount of offences that the person had committed, or the amount of church services that had been missed. Being a recusant or a non-church attender was very dangerous at the time, and if someone was being very rebellious with regards to religion, they could also be killed. But to hit someone in the wallet was deemed an effective way of making sure someone did not re-offend. The most severe punishment inflicted for those guilty of very severe crimes such as treason or heresy was execution. This showed the true brutality of the Tudor period, and there were many different methods of execution used. Some were much more sadistic than others, such as burning at the stake, a common sentence for religious criminals, in which someone would be burned in front of a huge crowd. Also, beheading was used at sites such as Tower Hill, and some incredibly famous figures were executed by axemen or swordsmen. Being hanged, drawn or quartered was a very bloody method of execution, and there were many more methods used, such as boiling alive and pressing. Henry VIII's reign would signal a time where it's estimated that 3% of the total population were executed during his almost four decades on the throne. Gibbeting was a form of public execution, but it was done in a number of ways to punish a criminal. A criminal would be left dying, dead or alive inside of a metal structure that was held above crowds and suspended in the air. This was used as an execution method, as people would die from exposure and starvation. But the point of it, if someone was alive, was to show the crowds and people who passed by the gibbet not to commit the same offence as the criminal. Over time, the public would witness the criminal wasting away until they died, and then eventually they were a skeleton. It was also known as being hanged in chains, and despite being a method of execution, it was also a form of public punishment which could have been incredibly brutal. Also known as the Skull's Bridle, the Brank was an instrument which was used as a form of public humiliation. It was an iron muzzle which was fastened to a woman's head if they were gossiping or spreading untruths around towns. It was an incredibly humiliating device for someone to be forced to wear, and there were many horrendous side effects for wearing it. The wearer could be led around towns on a lead, and bells would be rang to attract people to come and see the Skull's Bridle in action. It was first used in the Tudor period, at the time in Britain, and was also used for women who were deemed riotous or troublesome, and it was often a painful experience. The device would prevent someone from speaking, and would prevent any movement of the mouth, and often it could even pierce the tongue, such was the brutality of it. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.